Hello friends, it's Tiffany. And thanks for joining me for Saturday evening. It's gonna be a gentle flow um, with a particular focus on grounding. Seems like a helpful theme for the week. So gentle movement, we will do some standing poses. Um, and it's really helpful to feel your feet on the ground but we'll end with a good bit of longer held restful shapes. So make sure you've got everything you need for your practice. You're in a comfortable, ideally quiet space with no distractions. Um, you can improvise all sorts of yoga props if you happen to have two blocks, great. If you don't, anything that sort of looks like this size and shape. Uh, my favorite suggestion so far from Hannah was boxes of beer, unopened boxes of beer. So that's a good one. Four or six packs, I heard, work well. Um, but just get creative with anything around the house that you can both sit on and it can be a support for your hands when your hands are on the floor. And then if you don't have a strap, super easy to use a belt or a scarf instead. Um, blankets are great, and if you don't have those, get some like bath towel size towels. I would grab two, so that's for support under your knees when we're on doing hands and knees or um, lunges, that type of thing, and also to cover you or to fit under your knees or under your neck. And then if you do have a bolster, you can see mine over in the corner there, great, and if you don't, uh, find a couch cushion or bed pillow or something like that. So make sure your space is warm, comfortable. You might want some water. You might want to put on some mellow music. So just little details that can make your space more enjoyable. Um, what other little public service things? I feel, you know, particularly inclined to say, since we are practicing together, but on video, um, if anything that I say or suggest doesn't feel good in your body, then don't do it. All of this is just suggestion, yeah? So it's kind of your responsibility and your freedom to tailor things to, uh, to what you see fit. And I'll mention too, you might really shouldn't, once we get going, you shouldn't have to watch the video very closely. I'm just there as a visual reference if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but you might see that I won't do all the postures that I'm naming. Um, not sure how obvious it is at this point, but I'm pretty pregnant. So this is happening. <laughs> um, yeah, so there are certain things that just don't feel good to my body to do that did feel good a week ago and those things are kind of shifting and changing so if you have any similar circumstance in your body where you're not quite sure how to adapt I would recommend just going really slow yeah and if you can breathe comfortably then typically you're in a good spot so okay check the time I think we're about Right on time. So if you've got all of your accoutrements, let's start laying down. Okay. If you like extra padding, you can lay out a blanket or towel. Okay. And come with knees bent, soles of your feet on the floor. Take your feet wide and bring your knees together. And then if you want a little spacer, sometimes it feels good to have a block or you can also put a rolled up towel between your knees. And then just begin to rest down. And we'll take a good bit of time, especially if you're still getting yourself together, situated, don't worry, you've got plenty of time to settle in. To tap into the sound and sensation of your breath. And that feeling of support of the ground beneath you, just a simple appreciation that the ground has got you. You don't have to hold yourself up. 
It feels good to just sigh out through your mouth a few times. Go for it. And all the suggestions that I make in public classes, I would encourage you even more so when you're in you know, the privacy of your own home to make sound, to make noise. A lot of the postures you know, help to place your hands in certain places. So feel into your body with your breath, with your touch. Observe that clear picture of this is where you're starting from Saturday evening. First impressions in your body, your mind, your heart. You might go for at least one more clearing exhale. Gradually start to slow your breath down. You can breathe in and out through your nose if it's comfortable. And start to count the length of your inhale and the length of your exhale not to need to achieve any particular number, but just to observe how long is a comfortable inhale and a comfortable exhale. And in your own good time, begin to extend the length of your breath out. Allow your body to settle even more into the ground beneath you as you exhale. If you feel, if your hands are resting somewhere on your body, you might feel them getting even softer, heavier. And start to lengthen your exhale more and more. So still within the range of comfort, but say, for example, your comfortable inhale is four seconds, maybe you breathe out for five or six. This is a practice that you've been doing for a while. You're familiar with it. You could extend your exhale up to twice as long as your inhale. So experiment. Find your own rhythm. Use your exhale to mellow your body, your mind, your heart. all you wanted to do for the next hour, that could be great. Yeah. So knowing that this practice offers different tools and whatever feels the most grounding, the most connective to you, that's where it's at. Yeah. And then maybe, just because I chose a theme of grounding, maybe you don't feel like you need that and you want a little more energy and oomph, so you're welcome to tone things up as well anytime. Ready to shift from here. Practice moving slow. First transition, keeping the mellowness. Even as you bring in a bit of movement, you can branch your arms out to the sides. And with your feet still wide, rock your knees from side to side. You rock your knees in one direction, send your gaze in the opposite direction. You can 
continue the steady stream of movement, or you might pause in a deeper twist on each side. And there's so many different versions of twists, that's what I'm not gonna demonstrate, but find your own comfort zone with it. Okay? You're also welcome to stay with the version that you see here. Stay with that current of your breath. If your intention is to mellow and ground as we move through the practice, at any point you can come back to that just slightly longer exhale or that side out exhale and that might help you just drop in another layer. And take it easy, take your time to roll onto one side. Press yourself up, come into hands and knees. And as you do, you could place blanket or a towel under your knees. Okay. And if you've got two blocks, Send them to either side of the front of your space or your makeshift blocks of choice. Mm, nice. Hi, Mom. Okay, spread out through your fingers, curl under through your toes. Settle your hands and your feet into the ground. And simple details, man, can make for all the difference as far as feeling into your body, the texture of the mat under your hands and feet. Or to cat cow it when you're ready, arch your spine on the inhale. Round as you exhale. Follow that, several pulses, inhale to extend. And exhale to round. Observing those shifts in your spine of extension. Inflection, notice what's moving with grace and ease. Notice what might feel a little creaky, stiff or sore. And just appreciating all of it, appreciating being in this body, the array of sensations it offers. Take another round and then next time you find yourself here in cat, pause for an inhale, spread breath between your shoulder blades. And then with an exhale, let your heart melt between shoulders. So you're just reversing the flow. Now it's inhale to round. And exhale to extend. Noticing if that gives you access to different places in your body. And you switch it up like this. can begin to add more of a free form style to it. Create as much or as little movement as you like. Legs can extend back behind you. Head can gently shift side to side. You can shrug around through your shoulders. Or roll around through your ribs. for some swagger in your hips. Very lately I've been really enjoying slow circular motions of your entire body. I'm not quite sure what to call this, but you can see what I'm talking about. It's just circling around your base in one direction, shifting your weight forward, back, side to side. And take those circles one which way and then the other. And give yourself permission to get lost in any of these movements. Wherever you find the most enjoyment, you can linger there longer. Right? If you start to get restless or you feel like a certain shape's just not for you, you can move on sooner. From here, dial in even more strength for your fingertips. Really press down each 
fingertip and the base knuckles, the ones that meet your palm. Hold on to the mat, and then when you're ready, lift your hips up and back, and into downward facing dog. And you send your hips to the sky. And drop through the crown of your head. Drop more weight back through your heels. They don't have to touch the floor. They're just moving in that direction. Maybe you bend one knee at a time to dip each heel a little lower. To lengthen the back of one leg and the other. Lots of room for self-expression that feels good. You can shake your head out. You can make weird faces. Really spreading that enjoyment and presence to every cell in your body. One more round like this, in and out. And from down, we're facing dog, take a slow saunter into a forward fold. As your feet come to the top of your mat, bring them at least hip width apart. You can always take them wider if you like. And then take your hands to your blocks. You can set them at any height. Good. And for the first time, start to feel down into the soles of your feet. You can continue that pedaling action. So bend one knee at a time, lift one heel at a time. So notice what it's like for each heel to strike the ground. Where else does that carry sensation up? the backs of your legs, into the space of your pelvis or low back. Let your breath flow into those spaces as well. Take another round of breath. And root down through the soles of your feet. Place them with care. If you look down, outer edges should be parallel to each other, parallel to the outer edges of your mat. And lift up halfway. Keep pressing down, particularly through your heels. You're welcome to bend your knees a little or a lot and find a slight rise through your sit bones, a slight oomph through your low belly as you draw a belly button towards your spine for support, and then hover your arms out to the sides. And extend out through fingertips like wings. Extend forward through the crown of your head to lengthen your neck. Keep everything lengthening out from that center line of your spine. In all directions, get big, take up space. Take one more huge breath in. And then as you exhale, press even stronger through your heels, draw in your low belly and come all the way up to stand. As you come up to stand, you can set arms up overhead for a beat. And then let your hands float slowly to heart center. And draw a breath in and out. And that clearing exhale at that moment to slow your senses of perception here. Just noticing, okay, now we're standing upright. Open your eyes and look around the space and use vision. For most of us, it's the strongest sense to ground you in the space that you're in. Draw another breath in, imagine it lengthening, filling you all the way up to the crown of your head. And as you exhale, imagine breath washing, cleansing from the crown of your head all the way down through the soles of your feet like you could pour breath and whatever other funk you'd like to get rid of out through the soles of your feet. Let's try it three times. It's just simple. Breath rises up as you inhale all the way up to the crown of your head, the sense of filling this cup of water. And as you exhale, that cleansing wash out emptying, loosening, releasing out through the soles of your feet. Two more times. One more time. Okay, and then 
send your feet down that extra pressure point through the centers of your heels as you extend your arms up pause for a long inhale there and as you exhale slowly bow forward pause in your half lift find this sweet spot here and then press down through the sole of your right foot and send your left foot back. So we're coming into a lunge. Land your left knee to the floor. And padding can be helpful, so place blanket or towel under your knee if you like. And then just start to shift it back and forward. So just easy as you inhale, straighten your right leg, curl your toes back. As you exhale, bend into your front knee, sink your hips down, heart can rise. And this pulse back and forth. Inhale, right leg straightens. Exhale, allow it to bend. And follow the sensations. Yeah. I'm noticing not just one shape or the other, but all the incremental spaces in between. Your body responding to simple movements. be a template to kind of fill in as you see fit. So if you notice that either one of these shapes feels much more helpful, much more necessary to you, then stay with that one longer. You can linger either with the right leg straight, with your toes curled back here, it's more of a hamstring calf situation. Or you can linger in the lunge, finding opening through that back quad, other hip flexor. Give yourself three more breaths. Might feel good to just keep things moving. You can choose. Whenever you arrive at the bottom of your third breath, Plant the front foot steady, have your hands steady on blocks, and then lift your back knee. Okay. And you're gonna have to step that back foot in a good bit, I would say at least six inches to a foot, and most likely wider to the side. So left foot moves further to the left until you can get your left heel on the floor. And that's a key point, okay, to press down through that left heel. Press down just as much through your right heel, readjust your hands on blocks, and then readjust your hips to pull your right hip crease back to firm your left butt in so you feel this centering action through your hips, and then equal extension down through both feet. Your both feet should feel equally weighted. Send your tailbone straight back and grow longer forward through the crown of your head. If you want to make it more of a challenge, or I should just say more of an ab situation, you can extend your arms straight forward. And observe where your breath is moving and all the little cues that show you. Is there a way to tailor this to suit your needs even more? Are you willing to experiment, trial and error? As long as you move slow and kind, you're generally moving in the right direction. Another full breath in. And then as you exhale, lift your back heel and step your left foot forward to meet your right. So you'll come back into a forward fold. As you inhale, lift up halfway. And as you exhale, bow forward and then choose a clasp that feels good. You might hold opposite elbows here and just let it hang. That gives us kind of generalized traction through your upper back. You can clasp your hands behind your back and send your knuckles up overhead, more shoulder, chest opening. Or you can clasp your hands on the back of your neck. So different than the back of your head, find that shelf of your occiput, base of your skull, and sink right into that spot to get more kind of localized traction through your neck. So find what works well for you here and take three breaths. 
and the forward fold does not work well for you, you can stay half lifted. You can come back to the feet pedaling, hips swaying. Release whatever clasp, whatever you've got going on. Plant firmly for your left foot. Now send your right foot back. Bring your back knee down, padding if you like. Bring your front knee about right up over your ankle, not too far past. So you've got plenty of room to sink into your hips in that lunge. On your next inhale, straighten your left leg and curl your toes back. And as you exhale again, find that sweet sink of hips dropping, all this broadening, all your breath back and forth. Straightening and bending the front knee. Adding any little flourishes, embellishments that feel good. Knowing when it feels good to rest in stillness. And when your body prefer to keep it moving. more rounds, keep listening into your breath. Is there a way to open even more to the sensation your body's offering up? Just practicing those skills of perception. What do you feel? Where do you feel here? Slow when you're ready to transition, plant your left foot firmly with the left knee bent at first. Lift your back knee and then adjust to step your right foot a good bit closer to the front of your mat and probably a little bit wider to the side of your mat. So important again that you can get your right heel to the floor, whatever width and length of stance you need to get that right heel grounded. Press strongly equally through both feet and use your feet and then use this kind of squeezing action of your legs towards midline to steer your hips, left hip back and right hip forward. There's a firming action of right glutes that'll help you engage stronger through the outer edge of your right foot. Right. So play around with this stance and then notice what else does your body want to do from that stable pyramid shape, can you lengthen through your low back more? You feel engaged and strong in your low belly, you wanna reach your arms forward, cool, go for it. So settling down, feeling that there's a grounding power to a little bit of effort, yeah? If you wanna add the effort. More places in your body more alive. With one more breath. Okay, and then look forward, shift the weight into your left foot and step your right foot forward. From that forward fold, you can choose any one of those clasps, opposite elbows. You might switch it up to opposite forearm in front, it'll feel a little bit funky. Or if you're going for the shoulder opening, take the opposite thumb on top, which everyone feels like you didn't already do. Okay. Same deal if you're going for that neck release, just gentle at the base of your skull, give a little added weight to traction through your neck. Okay. Or feel free to choose your own adventure if none of those sound like where it's at for you. Find something that does. Okay. And then press down to the sole of your right foot. Send your left foot back and then immediately swivel. So you'll come into this 
wide-legged stance. Soles of your feet to the floor. You're gonna go for that parallel outer edges of your feet. Feeling for equal weight in the balls of your toes and your heels. If you wanna rock back and forth a few times to kind of test the waters. Noticing where you clearly have more weight in your toes. Balls of your toes or where you clearly have more weight in your heels. And shift it back and forth. And softer and softer movements. More and more subtle until you're in that sweet spot where you're equally planted through the balls of your feet and your heels. And then notice how that allows you to engage all of the different dimensions, all the different muscle groups throughout your legs in a really even way. So again, this is where I encourage if you're like, well, I don't really know, like what's going on with my calves or outer inner thighs, to feel around through these spaces. Yeah, notice where there's a sense of engagement or where there's a sense of disconnect. And it's not with judgment at all, it's just a curiosity. Can I bring more attention to all these spaces to feel the column of your legs working together to support power through the center. Again, if that means you want to reach your arms forward, sweet. If not, you can rest hands to the floor or on blocks. Draw one more breath through center, really feeling that equal balance of all muscle groups engaged, feet equally planted. And then you can start to shift it up a little. So bend into one knee and then the other. And pull side to side. Move at the pace of your breath. You might inhale through center and exhale to dip to the right or to the left. If you've got much more room for stretching in your thighs, you can turn your toes up just on the straight leg. I would keep the other heel grounded to sink low. That should protect your knee joints. Listen close to that. Any kind of twinginess in your knees is just unnecessary. Yeah? So find comfort and stretch and release without any kind of tweaky joint feelings. Shift it side to side one more time. When you're satisfied with that, turn your right toes to point straight forward towards the front of your mat. Turn your left toes in about on a 45 degree angle. You can walk your hands over towards that right foot to the inside of it at first. And track that your front knee lines up over your right ankle. You can start to press down right elbow into your knee or thigh. Firm up through your low belly. And even though your two legs are in very different situations here, still find that equal sense of grounding through both feet. If you need to play it back and forth a few times, do that, yeah? And then draw belly and tailbone roots down. So you find your pelvis, even though hips are also in different circumstances, still feeling this sense of meeting through the midline. So you come on up, find Virabhadrasana two. You can float your arms out to the side. Sink as low as you like here. I wouldn't go too far, knee too far past your ankle, okay? But maybe have a straight up parallel thigh to the floor situation. And if you want to pulse in and out of it, you can straighten the right leg as you inhale and bend the knee as you exhale. Keep testing. There's a tendency to want to like dive forward into the front leg. Keep engaged through that outer edge of your back foot. And then find your breath here. Find a steady focus, gaze over the right hand. If you want to get specific, over the right middle finger. And use that focal point to connect you into just being steady, being here in this pose. Take three more breaths. Exhale, you might extend it even longer. Just 
see what you can soften. And then slowly reverse to come out of it just the same way you came in. Even little mundane details, taking your time to shift your feet back to parallel. Taking your time to pause between sides, to observe the effect. What do you feel different now with the right hip and the left? And then swivel your left toes to point will be towards the back of your mat. Turn your right foot in about 45 degrees. Check in that that left knee is tracking over the center of your ankle, not warbling to the inside or out. And when you feel the steadiness of equally grounded feet, that sense of the columns of your legs, almost like vines, all these different muscle groups wrapping towards bone. And then that extra oomph of your low belly to hold you, come on up and branch your arms out and find your two. You can sink as low as thigh parallel to the floor. And you don't have to either, right? If it's comfortable to kind of play with that pulse in and out of the shape. If you just want to hold it and really feel the burn of that, that's great. If you want to dip into and out of effort, that's great. Anytime you need to back it off, listen to that. And take three more breaths. Listen to that rise and fall. One more round. Maybe even here your exhale can soften and extend. Okay. And then dive out slow. Relish the little details as you shift. Feet back to parallel. And then slowly start to walk your feet closer and closer together until you're in setting up for Malasana. So feet are wider than hip width apart. Okay, I'll show you where we're going with this so you can kind of gauge what would it take to get here. Okay. And if you drop your hips and your heels don't want to stay on the floor, I would go with this version, which feels awesome, this goddess pose is a really lovely way of allowing for that broadening through inner thighs and pelvic floor without straining your knees quite as much. And for some, this will feel better on low backs. Okay, so either feet wide with your toes turned out, or you can bring them a little closer together and drop your hips to where they're just hovering off the floor. Really kind to knee joints here, so there's no sacrifice of one body part for the sake of like getting into depth in another place make sure it feels good all the way around and then hang with your choice adjust as needed take three breaths come to that slower longer exhale again Malasana, you can just sit right on down. If you're in that wider legged, do whatever you need to do. Get creative to come to seat. And then as you do, I would go for something under your hips. Okay, so folded up blanket is a good call if you have the bath towel. Just fold it up a few times. Okay. And set that either to the front or back of your mat. And then when you sit on it, the sit bones just right up on the edge. So encourage your pelvis to tilt forward a little bit. And then let's see, just pause here for a moment with your hands alongside your hips. So we're shifting gears and then adjust this down a notch. Seated space. 
Feel the power in your legs to grow your spine tall. Feel the power in your core, even though we're just sitting here, yeah? That sense that every time you breathe out, you're cinching in strength from all angles. Core is a very dimensional space to be in, right? You've got all sorts of different directions of abs kind of packaging this strong but vulnerable space. So hold it steady for another breath. And then fold your right foot in. Anywhere along your left inner thigh is great. Hips will turn a little bit on the diagonal. Take your right hand behind you. And at first, reach up and away through that left arm. Okay, so press down through both sit bones equally. Extend out through that left foot like you were gonna foot high five somebody. And then as you exhale, slowly start to lengthen out over your left leg. It doesn't matter what you reach. It could be foot, shin, knee. Okay, whatever's convenient. And then reach up through the right arm. Allow left ear to soften towards your shoulder. Turn your gaze wherever feels best on your neck. Feel from that steady anchor, the base of the pose, legs, core, sit bones. Where can you start to branch into some interesting openings? You can move that right arm any which way you like. You can reach it towards the back of your room, whichever way that is, okay? So that you're getting more of a neck stretch, right side of your neck opening up. You can reach it up and over towards your left toes, so you're getting an entire right side body stretch. This will carry it a little more down into kind of right side waist. And if you bow slightly forward, more sensation through your back body. If you stay open, more sensation across your chest. Right, and pretty much anywhere in between. So let your right arm explore. And let your brain fill in the gaps between all this exploration through your upper body and still staying steady through your lower body. Notice that you can do both, that you can invite a variety of sensation and you can keep the sense of constancy, support. All of that impulse for move. Three more breaths. You might keep moving. You might be resting in a sweet spot. Exhale slightly longer and then take a slow rise. And then take a moment's pause, extend the right leg to meet the left. Rearrange through your sit bones so that again you feel that equal ground beneath both. And from there, just that steady rise of your spine. It's kind of an interesting place to balance. How much effort do I need to find the most ease possible here? So you're just resting up against a wall just behind you. Head over heart, over hips. And a straight open column for breath to move through. And then switch sides whenever you're ready. I'm just swiveling around so you guys can still see if you need to see. You don't have to move your position. Just extend your right leg and fold your left foot in. Arrange so that you still feel those two anchor points of your sit bones. And then with your left hand behind you, first reach up through the right arm. Take a giant bellowing breath into that whole right side. And then keep that right side spacious, even as you start to fold over your right leg. It's not a destination to hold your foot. It really doesn't matter what you grasp onto, but it will matter that you keep some space on that right side. Keep both lungs broadening. 
Most neutral, I'll be left arm reaching towards the ceiling. Your right ear to drop towards your shoulder if that's comfortable. And you can begin to experiment with all of the movement that can happen here. Through that left arm, you can reach it back in space towards the back of your mat. You can reach it up and over towards your right toe. And let your body dictate where are those natural stopping points rather than assuming you get more out of it by touching your toes. Right? Maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Maybe it's uncomfortable and you can't breathe that well. Like I would switch that up, right? You can wrap the left arm behind you. You've got all sorts of options. Let's listen in either movement or stillness for three more breaths. Last exhale, slow it down even more. Find that little lilt of pause and emptiness. And then rise when you're ready. From here you can shift both legs straight again. Okay, and then plant your hands. I don't know if you can see my hands on the floor here, but you have two options. Kind of just depends on what feels best in your shoulders, elbows, and wrists. So when you plant your hands behind you, the fingers can either point away from your butt or towards it. Okay? So just kind of feel into, is there a position with that that feels best for your wrists? Find that and then lift your hips. Any amount. You can go for staying neutral through your neck or you can tuck your chin, listen to your neck. And then draw a little bit more breath up through the front surface of your body. You won't be here terribly long, so take just one more giant inhale. And then with your exhale, sink your hips again. And you can shift off of anything you might be sitting on. And come to lay down on your back, draw your knees into your chest. And start to rock in circles. So send your knees, slow the motion in one direction. Move slow enough that you can feel your movements massage all the borders of your sacrum and everything that attaches there. There's certain kind of epicenters of opportunity to ground in your body and sacrum for sure is one of them where the base of your spine plugs into that solid bowl of your pelvis. So feel how steady that space is, how much responsibility it bears most of the time. You can switch directions, so circle your knees the other way. Just give that space a break from needing to hold you up, give it some love and appreciation that it does its best at holding you steady and centered. Okay, and then find your strap or strap-like thing. Okay, again, scarf, belt, whatever you have that works well. And as you lay down, you're going to take it around the sole of your right foot with your right leg straight towards the ceiling. Left leg can be straight on the floor or your left knee can be bent with your foot on the floor, you choose. And then press up through the sole of that right foot. Press up through your heel as much as you're pressing the balls of your toes into the strap. And then start to experiment. You can shift in all sorts of directions. Sometimes we'll take this kind of one um, range of motion at a time. But today, just to kind of get curious right away, you've been experimenting with these connections between legs and hips all class long. So you can move this right leg any which way you like. 
That could be back and forth, side to side, in circles. You might notice combinations of those movements. And without having to strain through your arms too much, let them stay soft and relatively straight. Look for this kind of persuasion of right femur bone to settle into its socket. Another space of deep grounding access in the body is just in a skeletal fashion, right? Where the strong bone of your legs connect to that base of support through your midline, through your center. It's no right or wrong way to go about it. Nothing you're supposed to feel to be doing it right. Just observe cause and effect what happens if I shift this way or that. Where do I find the most comfort? And then to switch sides, engage your low belly. And whether that left leg stays straight or bent, it doesn't matter. Go with what feels supportive for your low back as you lift the left leg with the support of your core. Step it into the strap to switch sides. And then just as conscious in lowering the right leg with support from your core. So stay strong as the right leg lowers and it could be bent or straight. And then once you've switched sides, just playing around with all the possibilities for movement here. A lot of times we emphasize the inhale in yoga, which is fine, it makes sense, right? It usually uh, sort of accentuates whatever stretch you're feeling, gives you more expansion and space in the body, which is all good stuff. But as we've been playing with these longer exhales, all class, see what sort of sensation your exhale highlights. What do you feel more of? What are you drawn to? as you continue to lengthen that breathing out face. Just for another breath or so here. Okay, and then when you're ready to rise up from here, we're going to come to legs up the wall and I'll show you uh, my version with just what I have available in my house. There's lots of options if you do have just kind of open wall space. Um, that's great. I don't have a whole lot of that in this room, but I do have this bookshelf, which works really well. So I'm going to show you on the bookshelf. Um, if you're looking around, you're like, I don't really know where to go with this. If you're in your living room and you have a couch or a fairly low chair, that will work really well too. You can put your legs up on the couch or the chair. It makes it maybe a little bit more mellow, but equally good. It's good in a different way. Okay, and so as we come to this, you will want your strap. You might check in with your body temperature and if you want a blanket, or towel to cover you, use that. And then you'll also use a blanket or towel to place under your neck for support. So you'll kind of smooth it out and roll it up about half the way. It'll look like this. And you can always adjust once you get into it to fit your proportions. And if you happen to have a strap, excellent. Take it what you think might be about hip width apart when it goes around your shins. Again, this will make sense when we get into it. If you have a belt, you can loop it again to kind of what you think would normally go around your waist. If you have a scarf, you just have to tie it once you get here. Okay, and the key if you're using the wall or the bookshelf, as it may be, is to really get your butt. So get one butt cheek right up against the wall. You'll be facing the side. Just much easier than to swing your legs up so you don't flounder quite so much. There might still be some floundering, and that's fine. 
but it does make a big difference if you can get your sit bones up against the base of support. Okay. And then strap around your shins. So you're here, and the strap supports you so you feel that you can allow your legs to fall out into it. You don't have to hold your legs up at all. So do whatever you need to do with whatever you've got to give yourself support through your legs here. And that rolled up towel fits right in the curve of your neck. So it's not pressing your head forward, it's cradling at the base of your skull. taking your time to get into it. I'm going to show the couch version too. Um, if you're already in a comfy space, then you don't have to watch this, right? But this is even, I think, even easier to connect to. But just so you have the visual reference. Let's see. The legs would be up like this. With your knees bent on the couch, there's something, I think, easily quieting through your legs. You shouldn't have to use a strap if you've got legs on the couch. of your breath into longer and longer exhales. And back to that comfortable sensation of ground beneath your back. easy support to sink into. And if counting helps give your brain something to do, just find that natural rhythm. Count the length of your inhale. Count the length of your exhale. Without any force whatsoever. Just look for that extra room at the bottom of your breath. Maybe it's one second or two, three, four. Okay, it doesn't matter, it's not, you don't get more out of it, just like what the posture is <clears throat> by going deeper into it. A single second of pause can give you that little world of rest to drop into. Say if at any point you'd rather not be with your legs up the wall and you'd rather just be resting flat on your back, you can make that adjustment anytime. And the beautiful thing about these home practices is that from here, right, just because we're going to rise up, I'm going to close the class, doesn't mean you have to move at all. You can rest as long as you like. where in your body you feel the heaviest. Wherever that might be. As you breathe out, imagine from that space, ripples. So there's almost this liquid quality of heaviness that begins to broaden 
and expand from that center space, wherever you felt it first, through more and more of your body. Breathing like this for another two minutes or so. You'll hear some flute music, so don't be startled. shape. Do you feel ready to shift? Move so slow. And really savor that sensation of liquid heaviness in your body. Your spacious, extended breath. And as you're branching out into movement, you may eventually come to sit upright. Just to know that those tools are accessible to you and your body whenever you spend just a little bit of time to sink into them. Right? You've got ground beneath you. This whole ocean of breath to draw from. else that you notice as a resource in your body in this moment, give it just a little nod of appreciation. You have so many tools at hand. Yeah, it takes practice to cultivate them for sure and life will challenge their use for sure. So we'll keep practicing. Um, and thank you guys so much for showing up this evening. Namaste. the rest of your evening. Again, if we haven't met before, my name is Tiffany, um, teacher at Earth Treks, and I will be doing another one of these a week from today, so next Saturday, same time. There's a whole schedule online, um, not just for the Golden and the Inglewood gyms, but what all the 16 Earth Treks gyms that exist. Um, there's tons of yoga and fitness and cool stuff that's happening online until we're able to open up again. So definitely check those out. I'm gonna continue to do videos just on my own as well. Um, meditation videos, self-care videos, and yoga practices like this. So all sorts of stuff. And anytime that it's nice outside, we'll be outside in the yard. Today was kind of borderline, so inside felt cozy. Um, but I really welcome your suggestions 
and also your requests for if there's a certain theme that you feel like would be really helpful, a certain practice that you always wanted to do, and if it's within my realm, um, then we'll offer that up. So, okay, have a really good rest of your evening. Take it easy. Thanks for being here.